Good Friday Reflection. We know that Jesus began his suffering on the Mount of Olives. Now on this mountain are eight very old olive trees, over 2,000 years old, and it may very well be among these same trees that Jesus was during his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. Ancient people believe that olive trees lived forever. Gethsemane means olive press. We find Jesus praying on this occasion as he did on every other important crossroads in his life, for instance, at his baptism, when starting his ministry, when choosing the Twelve Apostles, at his Transfiguration. The three Apostles who shared his glory at the Transfiguration would now share in his hour of agony. I believe Jesus endured four forms of suffering. His first was the mental agony. Just thinking about the physical suffering ahead was terrifying. Crucifixion has been called the cruelest form of suffering ever devised. Even today, people are crucified. Jesus knew and prophesied that he was going to suffer grievously, to be handed over to the authorities and to die a very painful death. But this warning didn't disturb the Apostles that much. Peter even chided Jesus for ever mentioning these things. Of course, the same Apostles fell asleep in the garden, and most of the rest of the Apostles, they fled the scene. No wonder Jesus asked the Father to take this cup away from him. Then there's the emotional suffering of Jesus. It began when Judas, one of the twelve apostles, one of his closest friends, betrayed him. It intensified when the rest fled, leaving him alone to face the angry mob. Peter's denial must also have been an added disappointment to Jesus. Jesus was betrayed, deserted and disowned, and then locked for half the night in a dark dungeon, all alone. A bit like people are experiencing now with the coronavirus. The words of Psalm 41 are now being fulfilled. Even my best friend, the one who shared my food, has turned against me. Another blow to Jesus in his fragile emotional state was when Pilate washed his hands of the situation, even though he pronounced Jesus innocent on more than one occasion. Then there's the physical suffering. In the scourging, the Roman soldiers used whips to dig deeply into the victim's body. Many victims collapsed and died before the ordeal was over. And as he was being crowned with very sharp thorns, the soldier, soldiers also mocked him and spat on him and ridiculed him for claiming to be the king of the Jews, while at the same time hitting him very hard on the head. Like all criminals, he was forced to carry his own cross to Calvary. So painful was the journey that Simon of Cyrene was enlisted to help him. Jesus drank the figurative cup of suffering to the dregs
When the soldiers offered him a drugged drink to deaden the pain, but Jesus refused it. Even though the pain of crucifixion is excruciating, criminals could be hanging there on the cross for days before they died, even for a week. Many often died of hunger and thirst. Many became stark raving mad. This is the type of suffering which Jesus endured for our sake. Ours were the sufferings he bore. Ours were the sorrows he carried. Then, of course, there's also a spiritual suffering. Perhaps this is the most painful of all. It is the suffering of being abandoned in one's hour of vital need, while at the same time being ridiculed and tormented, even abandoned by God, his Father. The crowd jeered at him and mockingly provoked him to come down from the cross if he was the Christ, the Son of God. Even one of those crucified with Jesus taunted him. Did Jesus then feel abandoned by his Father? We know the words which he uttered, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Are actually the first words of a psalm. So Jesus was actually praying the psalms. And it's Psalm 22. And if you pray it to the end, you will see how low spirit, spiritually Jesus must have felt. But Jesus, in the end, he prays another psalm. Despite all the suffering, and he abandons himself completely into his Father's hands. When he says, Father, into your hands I commend or I commit my spirit. He then gives up his spirit. Perhaps we could sum up this reflection with a quote from St. Andrew of Crete. This is what he says. If there had been no cross, the record of our sins would not have been cancelled. We would not have gained freedom. We would not have enjoyed the tree of life, and paradise would not have been reopened for us. If there had been no cross, death would not have been trodden underfoot. On the cross, Jesus won the victory over sin, over death, over Satan, and he opens for all of us the gates to eternal life. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world.